okay? Uh, I've done a, a show before, Edinburgh Show, where I review things, okay? So I'm going to share, uh, I'm going to do a review with you uh, today. Uh, I've got three daughters at home, uh, which means I have seen the movie Frozen about 400 times. <laughs> so let's review that movie, okay? Um, Disney have uh, had a history of... Uh, really having bad role models for women. Yeah, they're princesses. They just kind of taught, taught women that you just were waiting for your prince, that you didn't actually have to do anything, that the best thing you could hope for was to get um, you know, married to somebody successful. It was, it was ridiculous, right? So along comes Frozen. This is the movie that's going to break the cycle. This is going to bring princesses right up to date. So like, well, the 19th century, but baby steps. <laughs> so let's, let's run this down. Okay, and I'll talk through all the different lessons that girls like my daughters can learn from this movie, okay? So we open with a catastrophically world-class parenting fail, okay? Because in a castle that is full of servants and nannies and gardeners and guards and all the rest of it, and even knowing that one of their children can conjure daggers of ice from thin air, they somehow allow, allow their children to play unsupervised. Right? When one of them becomes unsurprisingly mortally wounded, instead of going to the doctor, they take, they take her to some kind of random faith healer or alternative therapist in the, uh, in the forest. You know, the sort of person that thinks they can cure everything by just wafting spring water over some bark <laughs> or realigning your chi. Right, and these quacks tell them that what they'll, they'll need to do is to take their daughters home and on the advice of these people, they decide to keep one of them in isolation and then tell her this is the first lesson, okay? So Disney says, ladies, that you should not actually express yourself or your individual personality, otherwise bad things will happen, people will judge you and you will be shunned by society. Okay, that's lesson number one. That's a great lesson, thanks Disney. They say to the other child... By the way, the little uh, red-headed one. Oh, um, well, we don't really need to bother with you that much, but no one will play with you, and we can't tell you why. <laughs> Brilliant. So, flash forward 10 years, right? And our two princesses now emerge unprepared onto a world with a series of devastating, devastating psychological and mental illnesses from their isolation. <laughs> right? We have Princess Anna, who is so psychologically damaged that she decides that she's going to marry the first prince that she meets. Okay, now Elsa, right? She doesn't like this, but she's no more socially advanced or socially like aware than her sister is, so I can only presume that her reason for disliking it is jealousy, right? But they are both barking up the wrong tree because Prince Hans of the Southern Isles is gay. <laughs> now... Oh, no, he is. Um, right, let's go to the end of it, because I feel like I need to explain that, okay? Um, when we get towards the end of the movie, um, Prince Hans explains how he wants to be sort of king and all the rest of it. Now, what he actually has at that point in front of him is a beautiful woman, uh, a, a beautiful woman who is funny and charming and completely naive, which means if he married her, he'd actually be able to get away with shit like, um, oh, no, honey, all women do it. That's how their husbands know that they love them. <laughs> right? He's got, that right in, he's got that right in front of him. Also, Elsa's out of the picture by then, so once he marries her, he gets to be the de facto king, right? And all he has to do to get all of that stuff is to kiss a woman, and he will not do it, okay? <laughs> it's fine. He's gay. <laughs> okay? Not the first gay character that, Dis that Disney have ever had, by the way. They're quite progressive with that. Jafar from Aladdin. <laughs> Obviously. Scar from The Lion King. Prince John from Robin Hood. Gaston from Beauty and the Beast massively overcompensating. <laughs> right, here, come, here comes another lesson from uh, Disney's Frozen. Okay, uh, Queen Elsa uh, has a massive hissy fit which causes um, a sort of devastating natural disaster within Arendelle because, Disney says, women obviously can't control their emotions, can they? It's lesson number two. Right, she disappears off, but this is a modern Disney movie, so it is not the handsome prince that goes after her. It is, in fact, Princess Anna, who's uh, dead capable, and off she goes riding on her horse. It's, uh, she runs in, at this point, into a really quite offensive Nordic stereotype. And uh, she also runs into our second love interest, because although, lesson number three, 
Although she is very capable and handy and can do all these things, she still needs a man to show her the way. <laughs> so, meanwhile, Queen Elsa is uh, up in the mountain. She is belting out the next generation's uh, massive anthem of just not giving a shit. <laughs> right? Three minutes, three minutes of like soaring vocals on zero fucks given. <laughs> Teaching all the girls once again that if you do want to express yourself and be an individual, then just be prepared to be really harshly judged and cast out. Uh, she also, during this time, uh, manages to uh, effectively give birth to um, a snowman with significant learning difficulties. <laughs> and which she takes absolutely zero responsibility for. <laughs> which is not only some kind of really sad allegory for teenage pregnancy, but also lesson number whatever I want for. That's, that just shows us exactly what kind of woman would do the things that she does. The kind of woman that would abandon her children. <laughs> right, moving on. We better, we better move on quite quickly and we'll be finished up. So, basically, what happens? Um, uh, Anna goes to see her sister, gets twatted again. She has to go to see the, uh, the faith healers again, um, who basically uh, try and marry them off without them even sort of knowing about it. Like, these guys are right wise for some reason, and Anna's like uh, an Iranian on a summer holiday, and... Like, being married off, whatever. Um, we've got to move quickly, we've got to move quickly. Um, and then <clears throat> there is this massive action sequence at the end, okay? Uh, a bloke rides on a reindeer. I'm not even sure that's possible. Even less possible than that, the reindeer runs as fast as a horse. Even less possible than that, a sword shatters on a block of ice. Even less possible than that, a woman who is frozen, solid, thaws out with no ill effects whatsoever. And somehow... None of that is harder to believe than the fact that a, a woman who up until this point has been conjuring things from ice can now conjure a fucking evening dress. <laughs> right, and then let's just move on to our final lesson and finish this up. Okay, we come to the end of all this. Okay, um, Prince Hans, uh, turns out that he's a rum and he's a baddie. Um, you may have noticed that all of the um, gay Disney characters I talked about were all baddies. Not got time to go into that, but have a word, Disney. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's your problem? Right? And the, the final lesson is that at the end of it, uh, Princess Anna steps up, pushes the man out of the way, and punches Prince Hans overboard, leaving him as far as she's concerned to drown, which gives us our final lesson, which is that um, independence and strength in women will inevitably lead to mindless bloody violence. <laughs> um, so, to finish that up, what is my score for uh, Disney's Frozen? I give it five stars out of five, uh, because it's a good movie with some nice songs. Don't take everything so seriously. <laughs> <laughs>